Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music, and today I want to talk about one of my favorite composers. We'll do a look at his procedures, the history of his work, maybe a couple little tricks of the trade, things that you can use in your own composition. I'm talking about Steve Reich. <laughs> For many composers, there's a moment when they realize it's what they want to do. And for me, it was sometime in the late 70s, I think it was probably 77, when I heard Steve Reich's Music for 18 Musicians. He wasn't a new composer at that time. He'd been working in tape and smaller percussion for a while. But that ensemble... New York-based ensemble of his, 18 musicians playing mallets, piano, voice, woodwinds, and uh, violins, just lifted the top of my head right off. He was using rhythmic procedures um, and some beautiful sonorities evolving out of modal transformations, accumulation phrases, and phase changes. We're going to look at kind of all of those things today. I hope we can get through them quickly. A very early piece of Reich's is called Piano Phase. And I've done a couple of little versions of it to look at because it's a clever way of extending a melodic and harmonic idea. And I'm just going to play this on marimba. But here, the left hand with the stems pointing down are, is played by uh, this hand. And the top two notes played by this hand. Basically, they're interlocking. So the left hand says this, and the right hand says this. After a moment, the second piano comes in, and then Reich's um, instruction is to gradually speed up, to gradually get faster and faster until the instruments are, and it's just ridiculous, offset by a 16th note, and then we do it again, and then they're offset by an eighth note, and then we do it again, and it's a dotted eighth note. Well, you can imagine, it's kind of amazing looking and amazing sounding. Let's listen. Here they start. First one, and then the second one, now they're in unison. And you can hear it's, you know, the same thing left and right. You can see it on the screen. Now here they're going to be offset. This is an awful lot of fun. And it really gives you a pretty strong sort of stereophonic effect as well. As the piece progresses, and you increase, te and there's a moment when you increase tempo when things get very weird. And you can see visually on the screen, again, they're quite offset, and this time by um, an eighth note, and again and again and again. There are a handful of phrases in the piece. This is just phrase one. Wright created music that uses this approach with clapping, with drums, and um, with individual instruments like electronic counterpoint, which is a New York counterpoint, which is electric guitar, or there's a woodwind version as well. So much fun. Well, I've written here um, a little piece for us that imitates, um, well, I guess we don't need to hear that backing track, imitates the techniques that we find in Music for 18 Musicians and then for the ensemble work and later. There's plenty of other things to listen to in Reich, and, and we're just starting with some simple ideas, the things that excited me when I was a young composer. We'll listen to uh, a, a couple of marimbas, and we'll hear an accumulation. Okay, here's our, here's our simple sonority. <laughs> It's an E ascending melodic minor. The phrase gets more and more complicated, uh, more and more complicated by adding notes. And 
And now once the phrase is established, I offset the second marimba. And you can see on the screen, at any given moment, there's, you know, seven different pitches happening. So we're experiencing the entire sonority of the E ascending melodic minor. And now I've offset it again by a different amount. So the rhythm, the experience of the rhythm is quite different. So I thought, oh, what would it be like to take the thing that we just heard and change it from all the notes of an ascending E melodic minor to all the notes of a E flat Lydian major. This is the E minor. It sounds a little dark, right? Kind of jazzy dark. E flat major. And I just used the old scale quantized trick in logic to do it. <laughs> Why not, right? Piece of cake. Um, of course, I practice stuff like this to be able to perform it, and it, it, it is really interesting and great for your ear. Excellent scoring texture, I gotta say. Great for a backing track. Well, Reich has gone on to do all kinds of remarkable work. He was one of the first composers to use um, the normal pitch inflections of a human voice as a guide to um, their writing. So his, um, his wife is a noted uh, videographer and uh, art film maker, and um, they collaborated on a piece, Different Trains, which is essentially kind of a, a Holocaust memorial piece. And he took recordings of survivors and then notated the pitches that was just part of what they were saying from, a, from the documentary film and handed those melodic phrases out to a string quartet. And then they created this long piece that stacks both the human voice and the instrumental duplication using techniques like this. It is a remarkable achievement. Again and again and again, he's kind of pushed the limits of um, what people can <laughs> perform and concentrate on and, and taken things um, like to a next level. It's art music, but it's art music that's percolated its way into uh, progressive house, electronic composers' ideas, and just in general, the procedures that we use to make modern music. The effect of uh, Steve Reich's thinking has just spread out into all kinds of music making. And for that, he's uh, I'm eternally grateful and he's absolutely one of my favorite composers. And today's his 85th birthday. So happy birthday, uh, Steve Reich. Well, I hope this has been useful. As always, like and subscribe to this channel. It's a pleasure for me to be able to do this work with you. I'm very interested in what you're doing if, if you're a fan of minimalism as well. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd love it if you'd comment on the video. It turns out comments are great for the life of the channel and the video. And uh, I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.